Well, good morning, good morning, good morning to you, good morning to you, and yes, once again, it is time for another edition of the Reading Circle with your host Mark Medley, and all systems are go. My guest is on the line. I'm here, you're there, and we're ready to kick off another edition. If you've been listening to the show any amount of time, then you know we start off with a couple of things. One, I give you the weather, what's going on in this area. I read from two books, What Can Happen When We Pray, as well as Until Today. And then I introduce my guests, and our interview will be underway. So as, some, as I always do, I ask you to get on your social media sites. Let everyone that you know know that the Reading Circle is indeed on the air and that they are to tune in. They can hear us anywhere around the world on GoBrave.org. So they have a computer and speakers. All they have to do is log on to GoBrave.org. Hit the Listen Now button. Make sure their speakers are on and they can hear us anywhere in the world. And here in the northern New Jersey area on FM Radio WP 88.7 FM. So I tell you what, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share the weather with you. Right now it is 34 Point nine degrees, and we're working our way up to 56. So it's going to be sunny to partly cloudy, high of 56. As I said, cloudy skies tonight, low of 42. Then on tomorrow, Sunday, we work our way up to a high of 64, low of 46. It's going to be cloudy early with some partial sunshine. Sunday night, partly cloudy skies, low of 46 again. And then on Monday, high of 63, low of 44. Expect more clouds than sun during the day and cloudy early during the evening. Tuesday, sunny high of 69, light winds. Tuesday night, clear skies, low of 45. And rounding out the forecast on Wednesday, sunny high of 69, again, low of 46. That's the weather brought to you right here from the WP 88.7 FM weather center today is october the 31st and if you've listened to this show for any time over the years you know when i get to halloween i'm not a big halloween fan and i was as a child it's just that as the years have progressed people have used halloween and how the holidays like that to be silly And when I say silly, I mean dangerously silly, like violently silly. Like, why did you do that? Because it was Halloween. So because of that, over the years, I've gotten more and more turned off to Halloween. However, I'm going to talk a little bit about that later in terms of being safe. But out of the book for today, October the 31st, from the book, What Can Happen When We Pray? Grace-filled wait. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be held from them that walk uprightly. Psalm 84, 11. Today's prayer. God of all creation, you are with me when I don't even know it. You care for me when I have no concern for myself. You love me even in those times I don't deserve it. Keep me focused and honoring your commands and trusting your promise. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Today's reflection. We live in perilous times. Corporate downsizing, family breakups, and handgun violence. The Israelites also lived in perilous times. They were threatened many times by military attack, but they were delivered time and time again. They experienced firsthand the joy of living in the presence and under the protection of God. God required of them what is required of you. Walk upright, act justly, love mercy, and in doing so, honoring God. Do this with the assurance that no good thing will be withheld from you. That's from the book for today, October the 31st. From What Can Happen When We Pray from Ian Van Zandt. And until today, she says for October 31st, I will realize my own worth. When I accept, I am worthy of divine blessings. For those who experience feelings and bouts of unworthiness, the Beatitudes, Jesus' teaching presented in the Holy Bible, offer hope. If they were to be written to address or rewritten to address this very common human experience, they might be explained this way. Blessed are those who have done all they know how to do. When they stop, God starts. Blessed are those who doubt their importance to God. God will never give up on them. 
Blessed are those who resist the urge to prove themselves. They are the owners of true wealth. Blessed are those who understand that life is a process of growth and healing. They will grow and their minds will be healed. Blessed are those who don't beat themselves up for making mistakes. They will live a peace-filled life. Blessed are those who realize they are doing the best they can. They go within themselves to find a better way. Blessed are those who hold no againstness. They will be open to new ideas and insights. Blessed are those who keep working toward a better understanding of the truth of who they are. They will ultimately find the truth. Until today, you may not have understood the simple things you can do to eradicate, eliminate, and erase any beliefs that support unworthiness in your mind. Just for today, remember the divine words and divine love of a divine being who knows the truth about you. Today, I'm devoted to remembering and experiencing the blessings I have been given. Ah, I have so many things underlined in that one. Matter of fact, I think her whole interpretive beatitudes i have underlines of all of them <laughs> blessed are those who have done all they know how to do when they stop god starts see ya. <laughs> i can go on with those but we won't it is that time of the main reason that we come together and that is our guests and she is on the line she was here called right on time right on t as my mother can say the phone rang at the exact time that I told her to call in, and she did. And that is none other than Ms. Denise M. Fields. She's an educator, a leader, and a speaker. Ms. Denise Fields, educator, leader, speaker, and author. That's what caught my attention. Truly understands the power of vision in the lives of leaders. She received her formal education from the Milwaukee Public School System, through high school, received her Bachelor of Arts degree in English from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee after attending Tuskegee University in Tuskegee, Alabama for her first two years of undergraduate study. She went on to receive her Master of Education degree in Educational Administration from the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Miss Fields began her career with the Milwaukee Public School System as a middle school English language arts teacher. Ooh, we have a lot in common. From there, she traveled the Midwest region as the National Reading Writing Curriculum Coordinator. She relocated to St. Louis to serve as assistant principal for one year and was quickly promoted to principal of the Confluence Academy Old North Campus, where she served for three years, leading a staff of 90 members and over 1,000 students. She later moved to Chicago, where she served as director principal of the Young Women's Leadership Charter School of Chicago for four years and was responsible for leading the charge of creating, preparing, and inspiring young women leaders of today and tomorrow. In June 2014, Ms. Fields was recruited back to Milwaukee to serve as the first executive director of Accelero Learning Wisconsin, a major Head Start organization. Ms. Fields' proudest accomplishments include becoming an administrator at a very young age, leading a school to making adequate yearly progress, we know it as AYP, over a three-year period, and leading the transformation of the only all-girls public charter high school in Chicago. She was one of the recipients of the first Principal Achievement Award in the City of Chicago 2012 and was honored by the Mayor of Chicago, Mr. Rahm Emanuel, and the CEO of Chicago Public Schools, Mrs. Barbara Bird Bennett as one of Chicago's 82 principals who made exceptional growth in one year. All right now. In March of 2015, Miss Fields stepped out and followed her passion in order to live in her purpose and found it F-I-E-L-D-S. That's the acronym Fields, Fearlessly Implementing Extraordinary Leadership Development Solutions Consulting, LLC. She serves as a motivational speaker, leadership coach, and professional development presenter for urban education. She is excited about building an organization that continues to support the growth of leaders in urban communities, sharing her experiences with educators, leaders, and families who are ready to step up, step out, and enthusiastically serve our children, our youth, and our communities. As a lifelong educator, Ms. Fields has a true desire to work with young people and new leaders by guiding them through the steps and creating their own unique paths. Her experiences have not only helped her to become who she is, but has served as the instrument she uses to help those who follow her. She is very pleased with the path that God has taken her thus far 
and looks forward to her continued assignments to serve others throughout her journey. The book that she has written that was released this year was A Principal's Expectations from A to Z for Students. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Reading Circle microphone, Miss Denise Fields. Denise, good morning. Much. You are more than welcome. I share with my guests each week as I read their bios that I do that for those in the listening audience that may be encouraged and inspired because I'm always inspired and encouraged by the various accomplishments of others. And the hope is that someone listening in the audience might be sitting on the cusp or they might be sitting on the edge wondering whether or not they could do something or not. And I hope that when they hear what others have done, they say, well, if it can happen for Denise, it could happen for me. And that might be the thing that will spur them to get going. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> so, again, welcome. We, we chatted a little bit before we came on the air, and we were having a good time. And I said it would be the same way once we got on the air. I'm going to share some information with the listening audience. And then okay. as I do that, as I share that, I ask them to get on all their social media sites and let somebody know that we are indeed on the air while we do that. And then we come back and we're going to go back into our interview. So, all right, listening okay, audience, right. you know the routine. Let somebody know that Denise Fields is on the air with me right now. Well, you know what? Maybe we won't share the information. I tell you, like, maybe we will. I mean, each week, the, the, the technical equipment, it, it, it does its own thing. So <laughs> I always say I'm going to share this information, and then it's not up on the system. So I will share it this way and then do it manually. Want to expand your horizons? Want to broaden your mind? Well, listen to the only show of its kind. Listen to The Reading Circle. We bring you what's going on in the world of reading, in the world of books. Sometimes the book may be from 20, 30 years ago, because the thing about books, they are timeless, particularly if there's a good message. And then there are times when we do books that are hot off the press that were just released. Listen to The Reading Circle every Saturday morning from 6 a.m. The Reading Circle with your host, Mark Medley. Only on WP 88.7 FM. Hey, wake up. You can't dream your way into college. There are actual steps you need to take. Steps that go beyond just getting good grades and staying out of trouble. Truth is, there's stuff you could be doing as early as 7th grade to start preparing. So if you're really serious about college, visit knowhowtogo.org. It spells out everything you need starting with step 1, finding an adult who can help. For the rest of the steps, visit knowhowtogo.org today, brought to you by the American Council on Education, Lumina Foundation, for Education, the Ad Council, And, of course, your friends right here at WP 88.7 FM Brave New Radio. Well, right before I shared that with you, I introduced my guest, Denise Fields. And, Denise, we're going to go all the way back to the beginning. We're going to go back to where did it all start? Where did your love of education or your desire to become an educator, where did that come from? Or or was it a career change? Or how did we get into education? Well, it wasn't a career change at all. It's all I've done in my adult life. The funny thing is, if you ask Leroy Fields Sr., my dad, he called it when I was a little girl. He said I would always play school with my cousins, and I had to be the bossy one. He always said that, and he knew I would be a teacher. I didn't really until I was in college and decided I love to read, write, and speak, I'll go into English, and my undergrad was English, but after that, that's when I decided I want to teach English. I didn't want to do anything else but teach English, and I've been doing that ever since. That is interesting because, again, when I graduated high school, I was going to major in English and music in college, and Mm -hmm. my father talked me out of it because he said, no, you're not going to make any money doing those two things. You either have to be (laughs) like a superstar like Michael Jackson, or either you're going to wind up teaching, and you won't make any money there either. So he talked me out of that, and I wound up majoring in business administration. So when I first came out of college, I followed the degree and went into business, or rather, shall I worked in business for corporate America. I was at AT AT&T at the time. And I did that for 15 years. But in the time, my senior year in college, I was a substitute teacher, as well as later on in my career, I'd become an adjunct professor at a college. Nice. And 
I was adjuncting while I was working for AT and T, and every day I would go into the office, like whatever my teaching night was. That was always my favorite day of the week. So if my class was on Thursday night. I would be like on a high on Thursday, and then I would come back to the <laughs> office on Friday, and would get into like this sulk or this low, and I would just be complaining about how I love teaching. And finally, mm-hmm. my office mate at the time said, "Will you just go take that teaching test?" And you know what? I turned around, I said, "You know what? You're right." And I did, and I came back. So after 15 year detour, I came back into my first love and passion, which was teaching, and I taught language yeah. arts as well. I taught eighth grade language arts. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's where I started. It's same that's with me, and then I started working all the way through administration. And from there, that's why I said we have a lot in common. So yes, teaching do. was always my first love as well. But I took a detour thinking that I was following the money. And the truth be told, I did yep. for a little while. And then when I came back into teaching, I took a 50% salary cut. But then within a few years, worked my way back up to it as well as within positions. But I can understand that passion for education. And a lot yeah, of people... Yeah, yeah. It, when it's in you, it's in you. It so is. There's no, there's no denying it. I, uh, there, I had a summer temp job, and I was the assistant to the director of a medical institution. Young woman, easy job, quick money, but I was bored. And I remember saying, this is not what I want to do. When August hits, I've got to get back into a school. (laughs) And when you do it with passion and and a fire in you, the promotions come. Yes, they do. The light finds you. You don't have to look for it. Oh, it's a passion. That's exactly my experience. I moved quicker in a couple years of education than I did my 15 years in corporate. And it is that passion. And and people outside of education like, you've got to be crazy. (laughs) You you deal with those kids every day. And especially when, and I noticed in the bio, you were talking about urban leadership. For sure, uh, whenever you deal in an urban population, because this is, this is the fallacy. This is people is a true misnomer and is a true misconception. People think that it's like a land of milk and honey to teach in the suburbs compared to urban areas. And that's not true. Each has their own issues. Uh, That's right. Urban has their issues. Suburban have their issues. I remember whenever I was doing the uh, training in alternate route to move from corporate to to training, a lot of my classmates could not get teaching assignments because they were alternate route students. And they were going into communities that those communities said, no, I'm sorry, no alternate route teacher is going to teach my child. Whereas... (laughs) In the urban area, I got hired right off the bat. It was, and each have their own issues where you may have disciplinary issues or some issues like that in urban areas. But in the suburban areas, you're dealing with parents who bring their lawyers into the classroom. That's I mean, right. And, and so. That's right. That's right. And, and people, you know, it, it, I'm glad that you pointed out that there are issues in both urban and suburban. But there are people who are very bothered by the term urban education but i always remind them there are doctoral programs phd programs specifically in urban education and i always say it's there for a reason absolutely you can work in urban education you can work you you can really really work but you do have to understand that those issues come on both sides all sides of education they really do and Mm-hmm. I don't think any either one of them is any worse or any better than the others. They're That's issues. Right. They're, they are. That's so right. whenever I have colleagues that jump ship to go to suburban, I say, well, don't think you're going to have it too much easier. That's right. That's right. It's, I mean, you start getting they into... They run back. Yes. They run right back. <laughs> That's right. When you start getting into the suburban areas, you start dealing into hardcore drugs like heroin and LSD That's and so right. forth. And in the urban area, you're dealing with crack and you're dealing... That's I mean, right. so... Either way, there are issues, and you're right whenever you say it's a passion, because I have friends, many that will ask me, would you recommend that I leave my corporate job and go into education? I say, only if it's a passion. Only if it's a passion, that's right. Don't experiment. There are enough people practicing in their roles in other other areas. Don't experiment with teaching. Absolutely. Know that when you have a feeling that you have, you know, that there was a business owner that, um, Uh, I used to work with years ago who would always say, you know, some people get up thinking about how much money they can make today, but educators get up saying, how many lives can I save today? Uh, And I said that was one of the truest statements I had ever heard. It is. Yeah, it really is. One of the things, Denise, I noticed about our profession, and and it really annoys me, is that people really view teaching as something that anyone can do. 
Yes, as as uh, as a, a fallback. Yes, option. and and if I've heard people work, say, it. "I'll teach." Right, <laughs> that's the exact, that's the exact quote. The, oh well, you know what? I got laid off, but if I can't do anything else, I go to no. Yep. That's yep. no, and I and Wrong I'm move. constantly challenging the staffs that I always work with in terms of promoting our profession the right way. I said, no, no, you right. don't hear anybody say, well, if I can't do anything else, I'll be a doctor. Well, if I can't right. do anything else, I'll be a lawyer. Well, if I can't do anything else, but they will say, well, you know what, if nothing else, if all else fails, I'll be a teacher. No. And so I right. constantly push against that because it dilutes our profession. It makes it seem like as anybody can do it because I've had experiences with staff members who had great content knowledge but could not deliver. That's right. That's right. I've had scientists, hired scientists, who couldn't teach science to children. Though. Right. Or, you know, even better yet, I won't even waste anyone's time, primarily the children's time, by hiring someone who says, well, this didn't work out, so I thought I'd come teach. No, <laughs> you can't experiment with my children. You Absolutely. Can't. And that whole notion of touching lives is right on point. I mean, that's one of the things right. that attracts me the most because... Back and and kids are kids, and that's why the urban that's suburban right. thing is like you know, look, kids are kids. And the funny that's thing right. about kids is, they really do want to be disciplined. They do want yes, to be told do. what to do, but they're not going to let you know that because that's not cool. That's right. Okay, that's but right. Deep down inside, they do want their teachers and administrators and whatnot to to be strict enough on them to say that there is a standard. And when they it, want to meet, they want, they want to meet that standard. That's right, and. You really don't realize that till five or ten years down the line when they see you in the street and you were their teacher or their principal and they start talking. About, I remember you and you said yeah. this. I remember when yeah. you did that. And, you know, you know, if it hadn't have been for you, I wouldn't be where I am today. I always that's remember. Right. Some, see, that's what I said. So in teaching, you may not get an immediate gratification in terms of your work because for kids, it's not cool to let the teacher know that, yes, I like this. Right. That's right. <laughs> They have to wait. They, they, you go through an initiation process, right. <laughs> and they have to wait until their peers like you or respect you. Then it's okay. Right. You know, you, you have to. They have to see. Hmm. Well, I guess I guess she's all right. You know. <laughs> so, it, and once teachers realize it, that's why I love the part of my work now where I'm coaching and working with teachers and principals to understand that you go into this thing unapologetically. You know, don't go in. Uh, fearful, you know, hence, hence the, the name of my business, fearless implementation of extraordinary leadership development solutions. If you fear, if you fear at all, you might as well just stay home. Just, just don't, don't bother. But you've got to go in there knowing who you are so the students and, and colleagues and parents know and respect who you are. And when you go in there and they see that, you can get them to do anything. That's right. Anything. That's right. It, 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 people, it's a cliche. People say it so much. Build a relationship with the children. Absolutely. And build time. People tell you that. I tell teachers this before the year even starts when I conduct professional development sessions over the summer. But people don't believe it. They may believe it, but they don't do that day one. If you don't get them in check day one, it's going to be extremely difficult day 51. It, it is. It is it, true. You have to play catch up. You are right on point, and I'm going to share this information with the audience, and I'm going to come back and, and speak to what you were just talking about. But All right. But listening right. audience, listen up. And now a few tips on how to make 42% less money than everyone else. I said less money. Tip number one, show up for work 42% late every day. By arriving at 1130, you'll definitely make less than your peers. Number two, badmouth your boss 42% louder. Once the big guy hears you ragging, you're bound to get fewer raises. And tip number three, just drop out of high school because dropouts make 42% less than graduates. Stay in school. Give yourself a chance. Go to OperationGraduation.com. Sponsored by the U.S. Army, the Ad Council, and your friends right here at WP 88.7 FM. That's our public service announcement in terms of that. But going back to what Denise was saying, and Denise, this is what I tell folks all the time whenever I'm coaching and working with people as well. If kids don't know anything else, they may be the academic achievement bottom feeders. They may not know if from ah, but if they don't know anything else, they know sincerity. That's right. 
kids know sincerely. They know when you're doing what you're doing for the love of them and their betterment. And they know whenever you're doing something just to be mean. They know whenever you're doing it just for the money. And I can tell you how I know this because I would get away with stuff in the classroom that some of my colleagues wouldn't get away with. That's right. Uh, Part of teaching, as you know, is acting. And it, it <laughs> yes, really it is. is. <laughs> it really is. You're on stage. I say that all the time. You're on stage all the yes, time. Yes, indeed. So there would be times my kids might would do something and I'd put on this rage act. I mean, I would take a piece yes. of chalk and throw it against the blackboard and it would explode yes. and they'd all sit there wide eyed. But they never went to the principal on me. That's right. My That's colleague right. would try that same trick and they'd run straight to the principal. And, That's right. But the kids knew. They said, Mr. Medley, we always know that you cared about us, that whatever you That's were doing right. was because you really loved us. So, because I asked, well, how come you didn't tell on such and such? Because they were just being mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, kids yeah, know. That's it. They that's know. Right. What works for you doesn't work for the next one. And they have to know that that's really who she is today, tomorrow, and next week. That teacher is going to be the same way. That's who she is. I had a young man come to me that gave, I mean, I think this is a kid. He either got close to being expelled or either I had given, he had wound up getting enough days, suspension days, as a result of me having to write him up or whatever. But the kid came to me like 10 years later because this is when I was teaching. Now he had a child that was in the school that I'm now principal of. And he sees me one day in the parking lot and said, you know, Mr. Medley, you were the only one that could calm me down. You were the only one that I would listen to when all the rest of the principals and teachers and everybody was talking to me, I wouldn't pay them no mind. But if you, I would listen to. And I didn't even know that because I'm thinking he's not listening to me either. <laughs> but see, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. That your payoff is later down the road in education. Yes. It may not be that same day. That's right. That nine times out of ten, it's never that same day. Right. It may be the last week of school. Right. You know, when, when kids come back and say, I'm going to really miss being in your room. You know, right. I really learned a lot from you, not just academics, but the life lessons. You know, I, I, I live in Milwaukee now. Right. I've been out of, I've been gone from St. Louis over six years now, but I still have a St. Louis phone number because there were so many students and families who insisted on keeping in touch, and I did not want to lose contact. And we still talk to this day. I know, that's right. My and son- it's because of relationships, yes, genuine and- relationships that were built. And you are right on point. My second grade teacher was at my 50th birthday party. Oh, beautiful. My second grade teacher was at, and I it, still it, keep in touch wow. with her to this day. Her name is Elma Royster. And I was at her husband's it, it, funeral, and, and she was at wow. my 50th birthday party. And yeah. we still call back and forth. And she always said, oh, Mark, I'm so proud of you. Like, and, but mm-hmm. that's the other thing about being a teacher, too. When your students yeah. wind up doing well, you feel like yeah. you had a piece yeah. of that. You had a part of their success. And the the, the flip side I tell students, too, is I don't want to be reading about you five or ten years down the line for burglary or murder or suicide or anything negative. I said, because that's tough on a teacher, too. And I've had that experience where I've, you know, kids that I know that I had in my class wound up, you know, getting killed or killing or in jail or raping or something. I said, that's not a good feeling for a teacher. No, not at all. Not at all. And, you know, when I was um, recruited from Chicago to come back home to Milwaukee to serve as executive director of Ocelero Learning, Ocelero was was one of the largest Head Start organizations in Wisconsin. Well, as a former Head Start student, again, at Head Start, you're three, you know, three, eight, three and four. My Head Start teacher was still working in Head Start when I got recruited. I went to her home to let her know that I was going to be the new executive director of Ocelero Learning, and she gave me all of the manuals and documents that I could use. I mean, it was, it was just unbelievable how years later you can go back and that first teacher that That's you right. had can see what you've become. It, That's it's, right. Education is a beautiful thing. It's it really is. When and you do it right yes. from the start yes. and you continue that trajectory, it, it's, un, it's amazing what you'd be able to do by the time you're an adult. Absolutely. And the fact that you're talking about relationships are so key. I shared with you before we went on air that on December 5th, 
Dr. Ruby K. Payne is going to be my guest. And Dr. Payne yeah. wrote a book in terms of poverty, like understanding the impacts of what poverty have on the children we serve, particularly in the urban areas. And I'm bringing her on That's because right. with my staff this year, I'm actually do- using her book as a book study to help my teachers oh. be a little bit more sensitive to what our kids are going through. Yes. Because a lot of times, a lot of them will just make certain assumptions. And I said, you can't make that assumption because you don't know what this child has gone through just to get to school. Oh, my God. And you don't know the drug dealers and whatever they may walk past to get there. Either their mother was a part of domestic abuse the night before. I mean, I've heard some yeah. bizarre story. And you have to take all that into account as to why the kid may not can sit still in class. That's right. That's right. Or may not... Uh, follow your directive right. on first, second, and third re- request. Right. You know, hence this latest uh, incident. You know, it, I, there are so many comments and opinions about what should have happened. But at the end of the day, if you have a relationship with children, right. you can tell when they walk into the class a little different today. Right. That's not, that's not the student I had yesterday. And right. that's when you go to them and say, we need to talk. I see it. Uh, absolutely. And see, again, this is if people would really get that. And that's where I'd be, this is my third year in the school that I'm because the, the superintendent in our district, he reassigns us frequently. Some of us, not all of us, but some of us, he resigns frequently. But this year, I've actually got a chance to get beyond my second year. And like, usually I'm sent there to turn it around and they move me. And uh-huh. so it's like, all right, now I need to stay put because I need to be able to build some relationships myself. That's right. And that's so right. Now, this is my third year in and we've. My whole three years that I've been trying to coach the staff into building these relationships and it's beginning to work. The kids are beginning to to bond with the teachers and so forth and so on. But back to like pulling the kid to the side that you were just talking about. I just had that experience yesterday. Teacher brought the young man in telling me what he told him to shut up and he did so forth and so forth and so on. So I just started talking to him. I said, yo, man, you know, come on. Because the kid, you know, he says, Mr. Manley, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't do my homework. I didn't do what I was supposed to do in class. And I said, well, you know what, son, I appreciate your honesty. I said, you, most of your conversation to me was what you didn't do. So we're going to turn that That's around. Right. So now we're talking. I said, what's your name? He says, Jeremiah. I said, man, do you understand how strong of a name that is? Do you understand how strong the name? And he didn't realize. So what's your last name? He said, Bridges. I said, Bridges, do you know what a bridge does? It carries people. Do you know the strength in your name? So his homework assignment over the weekend was to go find out what did Jeremiah mean? What does Jeremiah? Because I went on to tell him, I said, I'm big into names. I, I, I know the definition. When, I'm, when my wife was pregnant with my daughters, all nine months, we were doing name books, to, and we wanted a name that would mean something, not just something That's thrown right. together, letters thrown together to sound fancy. That's right. So I shared with him, I said, look, my name is Mark. Mark means warrior. My middle name is Alan. That means handsome. My last name is Medley. That means can do many things or a combination of many things. I said, so when you put my name together, it's a handsome warrior who can do many things. He looked at me like, wow. <laughs> and I said, now I want, exactly. so I said, I want you now to go and find out what Jeremiah means. So Monday morning, I'm going to find him and see if he found out. That's right. <laughs> but that conversation, when I talked to the teacher later that day, he says, well, what did you learn from that conversation with Mr. Medley? He said, I learned he was a, he's a great man. And he says, yes, he is. He said, but beyond that, when he said, oh, I'm, I'm going to go look up my name to find out what it is about. And then we, because the other thing was he was talking about, I got into this whole, because one, one word I've tried to do away with, and I just said it, was the word trying. Because he said, Mr. Medley, I'm trying to do better. I said, son, let me give you an example of trying. So I took a few jabs at him real close to his face. I said, now, did I hit you or did I try to hit you? Mm-hmm. And he said, well, you tried. I said, see, that's the difference. I don't need you trying. I need you doing. <laughs> right. And so there's a that's difference right. between trying and doing. And that's the lesson. He did get it at, to the teacher. He said, I'm going to do. I said, there you go. Because I told him, whatever you put after the words I am is what you become. So if that's you keep right. saying I am trying, that's as far as you're going to get. So I need you to that's- do. And so he was able to articulate that back from the teacher. And I'm sharing that story to say, based on what you were saying, sometimes it's just a matter of talking to the kids. That's it. That's it. And people don't do enough of that. They talk about the children. Right. But they don't talk to the children. They talk about the families. 
but don't talk to the family. That's just, right. And if they just flip that and talk to, they'd be amazed at the different response they will get every time. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's just the reality of it. We talk about it. People get through school and write papers about it and what will work and how to reach this child, and you have to step outside of the box. All of the educational jargon that we use, but until you really step out of the box, until you find out that a child's loved one has been killed, has, right. has passed away, and you wrote the, the uh, letter of condolence and went to the funeral and read it on behalf of you and the school, until you do things like that, That's right. you're just talking about building relationships. That's right. Until I, I, you find out that they're in the hospital for something correct. and you go to the hospital and sit next to them, the same kid who may have cursed you out correct. just last week. Correct. You're not talking about him with the colleagues, but you're telling the colleagues, I'm going to see about my student. And when you walk through that door, you'll never have the same problems again because you've literally stepped outside of the school and connected with him. You don't connect in school. And, and people don't understand, they don't Correct. believe it. You connect outside of school. It, that's usually where your best connections happen, Absolutely. outside of the school. Absolutely. I, I laugh because, again, I... I have a warped sense of humor, so people. I just tell people right up front, and I'm, and I'm as you can say, unapologetic. I'm unapologetic about that, but I tell people all the time that education and being a teacher is a poor man's celebrity. And what I say, what I mean by that is, you really are a rock star as a teacher. That's and, and, it. And this is why, because anytime the students see you out of the school context, it freaks them out. Whenever they see you food shopping <laughs> or they see you in the, in, the, in the department store, they see you somewhere, they're like, <gasps> yeah, Yeah, like, like, like they've, they've seen someone like out of a book. Yes. Or like off of television. You don't have a, a life outside of the school. So right. when they see you now, they're looking in your grocery cart right. to see what you're buying. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just it's funny. Mom, <laughs> it's so that's funny. my teacher. Mom, I mean, I've seen kids in obscure places. And I, oh, my, that's my principal. That's, and it, it freaks them out. But it's funny because they, I mean, I could walk around the streets and I'll hear my name holler. I'll, the kid will see me and I don't even know where they are. Yo, Mr. Metley! And, and it's like, right. but that's what I mean. It's like being a celebrity. It really that's is. Right. But I call it poor man because because you're not getting the movie star stat. You're not getting the movie star money. You're not getting the ball player that's money, right. but you are getting the recognition. It's the same. And back to what we said in the beginning of the interview. Our work is even more important than the movie star or the athlete. And one thing I, sh I close all of my staff meetings with is teachers make every other profession possible. Possible. That's right. Whether it's president, it's so astrophysicist, I don't care. They had a teacher. So I end all of my staff meetings with teachers make every other profession possible. That's right. Now, I'm looking here in your bio. You have an interesting combination of education between Tuskegee and University of Wisconsin. And talk a little bit about, you know, your various experiences because you have Tuskegee, which is a historically black college. Yeah. And then you have Wisconsin. And then you have, I see your other schools that you were in. Was it St. Louis? What's, I have to read through here real quickly again. Uh -huh. But talk to me a little bit about, you know, what was kind of like your experience in those venues? Oh, well... I loved my my opportunity and my experience at Tuskegee. Uh, I left high school in 96 and went right to college, went right to Tuskegee. And I enjoyed every minute of it. But had I known what I, what I learned when I became a high school principal, I would have sought out so much more money to be able to, to sustain at a private institution. Right. So that's why I, I started at Tuskegee. I got a $10,000 grant. And as a high school student, you think that's a lot of money. Right. Oh, yeah, I'm going, <laughs> going to college in Alabama. I got a $10,000 grant. And you learn quickly that does it, that's not going to do much for you. Right. And so rather than have the strain on my parents continuously, every time you call home, they're worried about 
where the money is going to come right. from, et cetera, et cetera. I, I didn't want that for them. So I came back home. I finished at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, um, and I started working in the school at the same time. So it, it, I, I quickly moved from a full-time student to full-time student and full-time educator, so to speak. I was I started at the bottom. I mean, paraprofessional to teaching or teaching assistant to paraprofessional to uh, substitute. I mean, just really moved up that ladder. That's right. So I finished at the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee because I was in Milwaukee and I was teaching. Now, when I was promoted from my teaching role, I was asked to take on another position in Missouri as an assistant principal. That's how I ended up moving to St. Louis. And right away entered the master's program for educational administration because I was fortunate to serve as an assistant principal at the age of 28 for one year only. And as much as I I loved the assistant principal position because you still had lots of interaction with the students, lots of interaction with teachers. You could make decisions that were necessary, but when things got a little too thick, you could say, all right, well, you can talk to the principal <laughs> and they'll help you from here. <laughs> but after one year, I was asked to take on the role of principal. Right. And so I was doing that full time and going to school for my master's full time. Right. So you talk about full schedule during the day and the and night. That's right. But being able to work in that setting while studying and, and getting all of the right credentials. That's how I ended up at the University of Missouri, St. Louis, and okay. I, I finished my program there, and I was ready to go, <laughs> ready to move more. Well, I tell you what, because we, we did a lot of talk about relationships with students and teachers and so forth and so on, and I'm looking here in your bio in terms of we affectionately know it as AYP. For those of you in the lay audience, it's Adequate Yearly Progress, mm-hmm. and I'm seeing here that you and Chicago is one of the toughest school districts in the country. It certainly is. And I see that over a three-year period, you led a school to making AYP over those three years to the point where you were recognized. Where I'm going with this question is because we talk so much about relationships. There are many out there that don't believe relationship and academic achievement go together, that you can't do both you have to focus on if, if you if you keep spend all your time on relationships uh, you know that's nice that's 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 good that's nice but we need the kids to score on these tests mm-hmm. a lot of people mm-hmm. think you can't do both but yet i'm yeah. hearing what you were saying and i'm seeing what you've achieved and that's telling me that yes you can yes you can but but again what does it go back to it goes back to fearless being fearless being unapologetic and relentless about what you have to do with the children you serve. In all, with all due respect to board members, uh, oftentimes you have board members, especially of charter schools, who aren't necessarily educators. Right. They, they are fundraisers, they are philanthropists, they are attorneys, they have all these other jobs and all of these other positions where they're well-connected and they want to brag on the schools that they're supporting or right. serving on, on the board for. So they just want to see results. They have no clue right. that the only way you get results is if you build relationships Correct. and sustain them. Correct. You have to. And so going into Chicago, I always, I always say this. The, my experience as a 7th through 12th grade principal of all girls in the city of the south side of Chicago was one of the best experiences I had because it challenged me so so much greater than any other position I've ever held. I'll never forget it. But in Chicago, I walked into that building and it was like East Side High from the movie Lean on Me. And that's my and I, that's I, my I, alma mater. That's where I graduated. Yes, I <laughs> <laughs> that's my alma mater. Well, I I don't exaggerate and again no disrespect, but the, the school was they needed a strong leader. Right. And I was I walked into the building serving as a consultant. I was just there to help the two principals, the co-principals who were there. But after about, mm, I'd say October to November, the board started whispering. And I thought they were whispering about the consultant in here. Who is this? Who is she? Blah, blah, blah. But they were whispering about how do we hire her? 
and bring her in. Right. So to, to be <laughs> to be brought in as a consultant where you're trying to build relationships with people, and then in three months you're the new leader. Right. You can imagine what I was faced with. <laughs> it, trust me. Oh, it, it was tough. But again, oh, it by had this to be. time, it, it was very a young woman, a right. young African American right. woman coming in, taking over right. our school. And all I knew was no, nothing was going to go undone, unturned on my watch. I just and when you have that level of pride as a teacher, that's what people lose. People lose right. the pride right. that you once saw in shows like. Uh, Little House on the Prairie yes. or movies like The Learning Tree and yes. Sound or Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, where teachers were respected yes. because they respected themselves. Like, yes. you, you walk with pride, walk with, with your chest out and your shoulders firm and say, I'm an educator. Yes. Not, oh, I teach. No, I'm an educator. Yes. That's what I do. I educate See, children and adults you, and families. You got me in your and amen corner. There, <laughs> you, you got me in your amen corner I, now, yes. That's it. That's it. I walked in that building, and I said, oh, no, there's some things that have to be done. And I remember telling the children, that I, I met with every grade. Seventh grade was fine. Eighth grade was fine. Ninth grade was fine. When I got to tenth grade and I gave the same message to everyone, I said, my name is Miss Fields. That's capital F-I-E-L-D-S. <laughs> if you have any issues with me, you write them down. That way I can see your writing skills while you're trying to talk to me about what should and shouldn't happen. <laughs> I know that's right. And, and I remember a 10th grade student telling me, because I said, Miss Fields doesn't play with children. She teaches children. She educates children. <laughs> and one of my smarty pants said, um, we are not children. Some of us in here are 17 going on 18. And my response was, this is a 10th grade meeting, right? <laughs> you wait to That's, That's all I right. said because you shouldn't be. And I said, right. myself, you should be eighteen in a tenth grade meeting. That's, That's why right. you should listen right now. Listen more and talk less. But I went in like that, Mark, and that made all the difference. I wasn't trying to be liked by everyone. Right. I wasn't trying to just pacify my board and get scores up because you will not get them up until those girls be- or those students believe who you are as the leader. Absolutely. Period. Absolutely. And then the trick, once believing who you are, you got to get them to believe in themselves. That's it's, it. It's that common. That's and that's why I asked that question, because I do a lot of relationship building stuff. And a lot of times, like you said, um, between uh, oversight groups or, or, or uh, school board members or central office, people, they, oh, you're spending too much time on, on that stuff. It's nice. That's good. That's nice. But mm-hmm. you, you, you got to focus more on the academics. And I said, I get the academics. I get that. But exactly what we've been talking about until I get the kids to believe in me and to believe in themselves and the teachers believe in them and they believe in their teachers until that occurs you are not going to get those scores i don't care what you, you say you are not it mark is- what's scary <laughs> scary <laughs> the name of the school is young women's leadership charter school <laughs> right i see it there that's right I'm a huge fan of john maxwell all day long yes. everyone who knows me i have every one of his books so I, I said, what a perfect opportunity to get in here and start the day with Maxwell's leadership quality. That's right. I, I'm in a leadership school. That's Why right. I, so every month we would start, I mean, every day we would start off with a leadership thought. I still do that to this day yep. on LinkedIn and Facebook. That's I try right. to do it every Monday through Friday. But I would always focus on one leadership quality a month. Right. And at first, everyone was wondering, the board was wondering, Wow, what are they? They're around here talking about relationships so much. Right. Oh, yes, October. I said everyone's fine in August when they come in. September they get a little comfortable. Right. By October there are all kind of broken relationships <laughs> around here. Teacher this to teacher, true. teacher to student, student to student. I mean, just uh, all kinds. So we're focusing on rebuilding broken relationships yes, so that we can get work done. Yes, indeed. And and everyone thought, oh, how great, how great. But as soon as we get the scores up and we get that charter renewed, now John Maxwell isn't important. And more importantly, when they do their research and find out that he's a a, a Christian author, now all of a sudden I can't use him. Three years we've used him. That's how the the culture has changed. But now that we've met the standard and now the, the school is off of probation, we don't get credit for using the the foundation right. of what was able to move this this trajectory in the right, right. direction. 
the kids have to understand I'm a young woman. Yes. And I'm a young woman leader. Yes. And I would, that's how I would talk to them. So I don't care about any personal background stuff, right. what happened here. Who are you as a young woman leader? Absolutely. And see, again, that goes so, back to why I read your entire bio, because I yeah. want folks to, to, to hear what you've been able to accomplish and what God has blessed you to do so that they understand it can happen for them. But last year, not this school year, but last school year, people thought I was crazy because what happened during the summer, I was watching the news and they shared about these two guys who were in New Orleans and they were hanging up signs. And the only thing the sign said was the word love. It was a white background with red letters and they were hanging them on phone poles, hanging them all around the city. And they were kind of doing a social experiment to see if it just by those signs being posted would cut down on the violence in New Orleans. And when I saw the concept, I said, you know what? I'm going to do that in my school building. So I came back. I had my technology person print up 300 copies and laminate them of the word. The same way they had the signs in New Orleans was the same way I fashioned it for me. I had 300 signs and I literally went around the building and tacked them up myself in stairwells, on bathroom doors and hallways. Then I gave a copy to each teacher to hang up in their classroom. So when they kids, when everybody came back in September and they saw love all over the place, they just saw the word love all over the place. So I was like, what is, what is all this love all about? There's a method to the madness. But sure enough, they've, right. those, those signs have been up all, now, this is our second year that the signs are still still up, and it has right. helped change the culture in the school. Too. As a matter of fact, yesterday we had a convocation in the morning, and one of the things that I was talking about in our little pep rally is, I said, I don't, I don't care what board members or anybody else say, and people may think I'm crazy, but the only thing that's going to change us is love. And I told each kid, look to your neighbor and say, I love you. And they, they laughed and smiled and they did. I said, look to your other neighbor and tell you, I love you. And they laughed That's and smiled. Right. I said, tell your neighbor, I'm not going to do you any harm. I, I'm not going to do any harm. I'm not going to harm you. I'm not going to. And we did. I mean, we did that thing. Those kids were so excited coming out of that little pep rally yesterday morning. But again, I, I, I have I'll walk that hallway and kids will just run up and give me a hug. That's they right. won't say nothing. They'll just run up. And I'm talking about the little kids, the second and third graders. They'll come up and I'll make sure I turn appropriately so it doesn't look like anything That's more right. than That's it is. <laughs> <That's> uh, right. <laughs> and they come, right. But you, the parents started coming in. I started hearing them telling their kids in the morning, I love you, before they went back out. And see, and all that wasn't going on. So that's when I know, like, when you do focus on the relationship piece, things begin to change. Mm-hmm. And the yeah. change, and this is because it's a hard argument. It is. That's why I'm staying so much on the subject. It's a hard argument to get board members and folks to change, it, uh, to understand and believe you. Because they really, many of them think it's a waste of time. That's right. Not they understanding do. that it's setting you up in order <laughs> to be able to get those scores. Mark, you're in New York. I'm in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And totally different region, Mm -hmm. same issues. And until people start to do things differently, stepping out, doing the things that you're talking about, doing the things that I'm talking about, things are going to continue to change. Hence why I said, you know, I'm ready to step out and really share the experiences that I've had and the success with the solutions that and solutions I've been able to produce and, and provide with ev- with as many schools and as many cities, states as possible. I know that's right. Because I'm glad you made that shift. Do, say that again. I'm glad you shifted our conversation toward that. Yeah. That that's your fields: fearlessly yeah. implementing extraordinary leadership development solutions consulting LLC. Let's yeah. Yeah, let's let's get let's delve into that a little bit about what you're looking to do and what you're doing with folks. What I, I, I fields consulting has. A few entities underneath. Fields Talks, that's the motivational speaking piece where I go around and oftentimes you have, uh, it could be a principal, it can be a a CEO of an organization, but they want a speaker, a guest speaker to come in and, you know, move their children, move their staff, move their employees. So that's the motivational speaking part. And I do commencement speeches for commencement, keynote speeches for commencement ceremonies. So that's Fields Talks. Fields, Fields uh, Leads is the leadership coaching arm, where there are a number of people who move out of the, the teacher seat 
into an administrator's seat. Right. Sometimes they're moved in quickly. Right. They're promoted right. quickly because someone quit. Right. Someone was fired. They need coaching, and they did, they don't get it. That's why they aren't able to sit in an administrator's seat for more than two or three years. Right. Because the first year, they're sinking already, but they come back the second year thinking that it'll be better. And it'll get a little better, but you still didn't get the strategies that you were supposed to, to learn. Absolutely. Uh, and then... And then Fields Days are professional development days that I, I offer. So I have uh, what's called ELI, Educational Leadership Institute, not only for educators, but educational, meaning you'll come and learn something that you can go back and teach your staff. It doesn't have to be just in schools. It can be nonprofits, et cetera. But it's a leadership opportunity where people come together. They share their leadership issues on their own job. They learn from others. Um, and just they leave moving, like more motivated to go back and implement some of these things in the workplace. But professional development is, is necessary in so many schools. So I'm, I have organizations who contact me. You know, we have teachers here. We're having issues with classroom management. That's always the top one, classroom management. Right. So I'll go into the school. I'll train the entire staff, give them classroom management strategies that work. That really work. Again, certain ways that you have to go about it, though. What works for me may not work for you. Right. But you have to play around and tweak it and see, how do I get to this child? Right. What works for this child doesn't work for that right. child. This child is in a two-parent home. That child is in foster care. Correct. So how do I deal with these two? So we, we have real, uh, on my flyers that I send out for Eli, for my leadership workshops, it says, real talk for real situations. And, and and sometimes I change it to say real solutions for real situations because that's the key. This is I'm not just giving you random strategies. Right. Let's talk about what really happened in your building this morning. How are you going to deal with that tomorrow? So that's what Phil's Consulting is made up of. So that's what I do, and I do that full time. So it could be here in Milwaukee. I've gone to St. Louis. I've been asked to come down to Florida in January. All so right. just just really spreading this. And right now, I'm a very small team, but it's growing. And I, as I'm traveling and visiting cities and schools, I'm looking for educators who know they this educator knows what to do with children in urban ed. And once I'm ready to build that team where I'm not the only one traveling, then, then we're going to have something great. Well, I'll tell you what, we, LLC, be, we, be on the lookout. I, I tell you what, we're going to stay in touch because I might be interested in joining Fields. But, <laughs> <All right. laughs> but in any event, it's, I, as I listen to you talk, you're broadening your scope because – Whenever I was, I, I, told, I shared the history about moving from uh, corporate into the classroom, but whenever I was teeter tottering on making the decision to move out of the classroom into administration, I was doing my M. Ed. And the dean of the program and I, we were very close. Matter of fact, we're still close to this day. I'm, matter of fact, I'm doing another coursework with him as a part of professional development in my district. But okay. I, I, I talked to him, his name is Dr. Michael Chiricello, and I said, Mike, I said, you know, I'm really struggling with this whole notion of getting out of the classroom because I, I was going to lose contact with students and so forth and so on. He said, well, let me put it to you this way, and I'll never forget it. He says, as a classroom teacher, you can impact 15 to 20, maximum 25 to 30 students at a time. But as a building leader, you get to impact a building. Mm -hmm. And once he said that... I was sold. Yep. And where I'm going yep. with this is you've now taken it a step further rather than impacting one building with feels you can impact infinite buildings. Multiple. Multiple. Yes. You know, Mark, it, and, and it's scary because you do wonder, you know, am I going to be people will wonder, am I going to be memorable? It, right. what, what I go and say to a, a group of 100 students at a commencement ceremony, will they ever see me again? Right. But when you know that you're a memorable person, I'm a memorable, I'm a character, Mark. I, oh, I, you yeah. know, I believe that. Just when we picked up the phone this morning, I said, oh, we're going to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me over the phone, but to, to see me in person and, and live in, in action in front of an audience, I, I, and I'm so much more uh, probably animated in front of an audience of 100 versus an audience of 10. But either way, <laughs> it's very memorable. You know, children will tell you the truth. Yes, you know, they will. Babies really tell you the truth. Yes, they but will. But high school students, 
they're in graduation. They they don't know the keynote speaker usually. Right. If there's a guest, they're like, oh, we'll, we'll be glad when this is over. <laughs> but I, I spoke at one of the largest <laughs> high schools here in Milwaukee, at Bradley Tech High School, last in June. Right. And as those children were coming across the stage to shake my hand as well. So many of them said that was a great speech, right? Awesome speech, and I was so I I was happy that they felt that way. But I was so bothered with myself that I didn't have my book completed at the time. My book was published in July, so graduation season was over. But I said every one of them, the, the, the table of contents. I gave to each of them, but the book wasn't printed. Well, I tell you so what, I want you next season coming. I oh, know every school I speak at, every I know graduate that's right. needs to have that book in their hand because it is it's touching lives, and it says for students, but that can be for sixty year old students, anyone who knows that they they are still learning every day. It, it, it when you just go through it, I, Mark, you got to get one in your hand. Oh, I am. As a matter of fact, I, can you hang out? Because I know we were scheduled to talk from 6 to 7, and now it is yes, 7 yes. my time, but can you hang out for another half hour or so? I can. Okay, hang on. I need to do what I need to do because it's a 7 o'clock okay. hour, and then I want you okay. to hang because now I want to shift from because it's all connected, but we're, we're doing it in segments. We talked about okay, our education. Right. We talked about fields. And now I want to talk about the book. And there are times right. whenever I run over, and I'm okay with that because I have three hours. So, um, okay. you know, we can hang out for another half hour. So I want to let everyone know about the book. And I looked to see if I could download it because I was going to download it. And I see it's not in Amazon download format yet. But I definitely yeah. want to get a, a hard copy of it. So hang Absolutely. out. Hang out right there. And let okay. me do what I need to do here. WPSC-FM 88.7, Wayne, New Jersey. Part of the William Patterson Broadcast Network. Brave New Radio. Brave New Radio. Give us your tired, your poor, your hungry, your rockers, your punks, your freaks, your geeks, your Greeks, your party animals, your gangsters, your commuters, your residents, your students, your alums, your lawyers, your truckers, your calls, your tweets. And we'll give you rock, classic, indie, punk, alternative, easy, hard, raps, rhymes, mixes and drops. We'll give you kick-ass music because we're WPSC 88.7 FM. Brave New Radio. Sound good? Straight from the WP 88.7 FM Weather Center, here's your local forecast. All right, we are at 33.8 degrees, allegedly working our way up to 56. We shall see. It'll be a 42 to low tonight, mainly sunny to start, overcast tonight. And then tomorrow, Sunday, 64 as a high, 46 as a low, cloudy skies early, a few clouds on Sunday night. Then on Monday, mainly cloudy, high of 63, low of 44. It's going to remain cloudy Monday night. Tuesday, mainly sunny, high of 69. Wow, November and 69 works for me. 45 as a low, Tuesday night clear. And then Wednesday, 69 as a high, 46 as a low. Clear skies on Wednesday night as well as on Wednesday. That is the weather brought to you right here from the WP 88.7 FM Weather Center. Also tonight, don't forget to fall back. Turn your clocks back an hour. We'll fall back into daylight savings time, so... Fall back. Remember, spring, we move ahead, and in the fall, we fall back. And, Denise, I always have fun at this time of the year because there are actually people that think we go to 23 hours and 25 hours. <laughs> I mean, it's like, no, no, it's the same 24 hours. You just lost it for that night. That's all. Just for that one night. You didn't You didn't go to 23 hours, and you didn't go to 25. But there are folks like, oh, my God, we're losing it. No, no, no. It's just for that one night. So I always have fun when it's uh, head and back time whenever we do the clock thing. Uh, but if you've just joined us, and I hope you've been with us since six, my guest is Denise Fields, and we have been talking about a plethora of things in the educational field, which is my passion and her passion, as you can feel coming through the airwaves. And certainly, education is my passion. It's just something about being in a school, whether it's on a college campus, an elementary school, a high school. It is just something about being in the environment of education for those of us who are educators, and that's our passion. And that's what we've been talking about. And right before I had to do the top of the hour stuff, Denise started talking about her book. And I'm glad she went there because really we have been telling the story of how Denise became an educator as well as her educational experiences. And then her breaking out, branching out from being an educator in one building to starting her own consulting company to impact multiple buildings. And as a part of that, she has written a book. And that's where we started 
Oh, that's where we were whenever I went into the seven o'clock hour. The title of the book is A Principal's Expectations from A to Z for Students. And it was released in July of 2015. So uh, let's talk a little bit about that, Denise, while we're there for the next uh, 25, 20 minutes or so. Sounds great. So, okay, where did the book come from? When I was in St. Louis, I left um, when I knew it was going to be my last year. I had an eighth grade graduating class, and I said, I need to leave them with something that, I, that they'd remember me by. If they heard these words 10 years from now, I want them to be able to say, Miss Fields used to tell us that all the time. Oh, that sounds like Miss Fields. <laughs> and I remember sitting at my desk writing my speech for graduation, as the principal's last words or what right. have you. And I said, what do I want them to remember? And it was so quick, Mark. I, I said, something from A to Z. And it, initially it was called Miss Fields' Expectations from A to Z. And once I turned it into a book, I made it more general, a principal's right. expectation. Because it, and you would you'd be able to tell me this, Mark. Every every letter represents something that a principal at some point in some form or fashion has told a, a child before, their students before. So we can take any letter. Uh, letter right. M is mean what you say and say what you mean. I know that's so, right. And, and every principal would agree with that. L is look forward and leave negative mess behind. Mm. And notice... The, the way that I speak in the book yes. is very clear that it's my voice. Right. So it's not too academia, but it's not too childlike either. It's very candid, and it's very direct. Letter X is X out haters. Mm. And that it's, so uni- it's such universal language in right. the book because everyone has experienced that before. And I'm just trying, I was trying to teach students these are things that you're going to have to be on the lookout for as you enter high school. Yes, indeed. As an eighth grader, you, you've got to know what's coming. I Now, stay, I'm going to put a pin in that point right there for a second. Okay. Because that's one of the messages I constantly try to help the eighth graders understand. That high school is a totally different world. That's and right. And I said, there isn't going to be no one shepherding you around from class to class saying, line up, that's so forth right. and so on. When you get there, it's not going to be like in my school, I have about 500 kids. When you get to your high school, it's going to be two or 3,000 kids. So the, the, right. the teacher and principal probably will not even know your name. And so That's they're right. not going to care whether you get to class or not. All they're going to do is look in their role book, and if you're not there, you're going to receive a cut. And then mm-hmm. not to mention, just your locker may be in one part of the building, and your class may be a half mile away. And you're still expected to get there within those three minutes. So all That's these different right. little experiences, I try to help them understand. And they look at me like, oh, Mr. Melly, you don't know what you're talking about. And the mm-hmm. biggest kick I get is when they come back in October, about this time, they come back to visit their teachers in the grammar school. Hey, how's high school going? Oh, it's a big responsibility. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very different. Is, is that not what we tried to tell you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's why I said a principal's expectation. Yes, Any indeed. People will pick this book up and say yes to every chapter. And not <laughs> notice I gave an example for eighth graders. But even high schoolers, right. letter S is speak so people will listen. Yes. High schoolers need to understand that when you open your mouth yes. in class, Make sure that people want to hear what you have to say. Or, and even if they don't agree, your voice is so intriguing, it makes them listen. Absolutely. What about, those, what about a principle? The letter T is train your minds to receive positive thoughts. You don't need a negative principal leading a building. Absolutely. You need a principal who, regardless of if these three teachers over here are whispering, and when you walk through the, the hall, they may stop. <laughs> you, the first thing, a, a negative person thinks, they must be talking about me. But no, when you train your mind to receive positive thoughts, they might be planning something for you because they right. see how hard you're working. Right. You know, right. not walk past and say, hey, what you all planning for me? I know you're planning something. You know, just, just to stay personable. <laughs> With your team. So, I mean, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful read. I mean, I've, I've had some great feedback. I mean, again, 60-year-olds at my church who purchased the book for their grandchildren said they, I just opened it up to start skimming, and I ended up reading it, and I've started marking it up for myself. I need two more copies because I, I've read one and given one to my spouse, you know, and that's a wonderful feeling. In 2016, 
the version comes out for teachers, a principal's expectations for teachers, oh. and then in 2017 for now. families. Well, I tell you, yes. I, I, I cannot wait to get my copy of this because just the ones that you've used as an example, the, mm-hmm. the public speaking piece, because I told you I was an adjunct, and that's what I taught. I taught public speaking. I taught public oh, speaking, great. business writing, communications, organizational communications. That's what I teach whenever I adjunct at the colleges. And great. I tell students, as a matter of fact, I've even done public speaking workshops at my church and my wife's church and so forth. Nice. Uh, and my daughter, who she's a senior now at Dell State. And she okay. always was kind of like, I don't, I don't think she appreciated the value of public speaking until she got to college and had to take the course. So one day <laughs> I get this text from her saying, Dad, you know that public speaking stuff you're always talking about? I said, yes. She mm. said, you were right. <laughs> Everything we do <laughs> no. here in college is public speaking. Tell the other kids that you're teaching that take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> her name is Niara and I said Niara this is what I kept trying to tell you but colleges have now made public speaking a mandatory course regardless of your major That's right so regardless right. of what your major is you have to come through a public speaking course That's and right. so and uh, you should yes and you should I constantly in the course we do a lot of focusing on fillers such as um uh, mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we do a lot of focus on that to remove those because what happens is whenever you have a bunch of fillers, people don't hear your message. They start That's right. Play, they, they're, they're, they start counting yes. how many ums. They, they start say. playing <laughs> games with your fillers. That's exactly right. That's right. And we do a That's lot of work. Right. So the younger you get that, the better you are. So if we can catch you in elementary school or in high school to become a, pro, a prolific speaker, people don't realize just how much the speaking will get them in the door. That's right. President that's Obama right. got noticed because of his speech. That, that's right. That's where that's he, right. he, when he did a Democratic convention speech, that's when folks started raising their eyebrows. Mark, I, just last evening, I was I served as the um, the MC for the NAACP banquet, right. their Freedom Fund dinner in yes. Racine, Wisconsin. And, you know, I usually, when I attend events like that, I'm usually speaking, or at least that's what I, my goal is to be the speaker, the guest speaker. Right. But I said, well, I still have an opportunity to talk. That's right. So as an MC, I'm still going to talk. That's I'm still right. going to find ways to to show who I am and what I believe. And by the end of it, the feedback that came to to the MC. Right. Saying, wow, you were great. And I just kept saying, thank you, Lord. Like that, and uh, I, that's what I do for a living. You're so absolutely regardless right. Regardless of what you're, if you're greeting people at the door, if right. you're the MC or if you're the guest speaker, when you open your mouth, again, letter S, chapter S. Yes. Speak so people will listen. Be intriguing. You know, be be someone who's intriguing enough That's for correct. people to say, I'd listen to her anywhere. I, I, I'd go and I'd pay to hear her speak. You absolutely. know, that, that's what you, your goal should be. Absolutely. And, I, and the, the part you talked about, the, the negativity, I laugh because your staff members get to know you after a while. So they can tell, because I, I do my morning announcements all the time on the PA system mm-hmm. when I'm there. Unless I'm called into a central office meeting or something, I'm there. I don't miss school. And I do my morning announcements. And I even had one time one of our oversight group members tell, oh, you shouldn't do your morning announcements every morning. Da, da. I said, no, I, they need to hear the leader's voice. And where, right. and where I'm going with this is they can tell by the inflections and sound of my voice kind of like yes. what mood I'm in. And what kind of day you're Yes. At? And so right. I've had to just come to me and say, Mr. Metley, you sound kind of down today. I'm used to your excited, animated voice. I'm used to the energetic. Mm-hmm. So you know what? Something's going on. Or, you know, we could tell that. And I, and I was glad for that the staff members came and told me that. Because then they came back and said, like, when I was very enthusiastic like I am now, like, oh, we hear the passion back in your voice again. We know you. <laughs> so it no, matters. you're okay. <laughs> it makes a difference. They feel the energy the negativity or the positivity they feel so the, I'm, where I'm going with all of this is the points that you're bringing up in the book are right on point and I can't yes. wait to get my copy and then the fact that you're getting ready to do like a series of them because oh, all yes. of those stakeholders matter yeah they do they do and as soon as they start getting into hands I mean when it was released in July the the um, 
you were able to order because it's on Amazon.com and Barnes and Noble.com on their website. Well, I'm looking. That's where I'm um, looking at it right now on the Amazon website. Yeah, yeah, it's out there, and and so I was so excited about the people afar, people who I couldn't reach right away, right. saying that I need to order mine, and I'm ordering ten copies, and someone uh, uh, said I just placed my order, and everyone started sending their confirmation. So right. that was great. But in August, when I got my hard copies and I started getting shipments in, I was ordering as quickly as I was selling them. And I just said, that's the goal. I, it, it needs to be in every student's hand, teacher's hands, parent's hand. Right. And oftentimes when people hear me recite the A to Z, right. that's the seller because they hear it. They hear, excuse me, they hear every chapter. I just go through the, the table of contents and just re, recite those. They say, I've got to have that. So it's easier to sell when people hear it. But once you talk to the person, you know, as the author, people want to hear right. from you. Like Correct. your first question was, where did it come from? Right. What was its motivation? And that's what's most important, understanding where it started and why I trust you. In every chapter at the end, it has a, a page called My Commitment. That way, it, it, it's, it's, um, it's interactive. So when a, a parent is saying, I want you to read Chapter A, and we're going to talk about it. Chapter A is adjust your attitude right. to reflect the positive young man or woman you were meant to be. And then at the end it, at the end of the chapter, the chapter is very short. It's a very short read. It gives them three to five challenge questions. In and, and, and A, it's, it's questions like, is my attitude consistent? Right. Is my attitude contingent upon who's in the room at the time? And then it says, my commitment. And it's a space for them to write down what their commitment to the adjusting their attitude will be. Every hand it touches, Mark, people call back and say, this is a great piece. Well, I tell so you I, what, I I'm want, I want you to have it in New York and get it out as it, far as we can get it. I tell, you, I tell you exactly what I'm going to do when I get my coffee, because you just heard me say I do my morning announcements every morning. I'm going to yes. incorporate something from the book each morning into my morning announcement. Just listening to you. I haven't seen it yet, but just listening to you, it already popped into my mind. I'm going to take excerpts from that each morning now doing my morning announcements when I get my copy, because again, it throws out some positivity for the day. Yeah, so when yeah, I get my copy, yeah. you can. It's going to be incorporated into my morning announcements, as well as I have an Excellent. electronic message board. So I'll be putting some of the messages on the electronic board. But there's no question; Excellent. I have to get my copy of it because I can hear the passion in your voice. I can tell yeah. the subject matter in terms of each chapter that it's something that we need to hear. And matter of fact, that's what caught my eye to invite you as a guest on the show because I remember on LinkedIn you were talking about rolling out your new book. And it was yes. this one, a principal's exam. And that's whenever I had linked in you, messaged you, inboxed you, and said, yep. would you like to appear on the show? That's what yes. caught my eye. Two things. The I fact remember. that you were an educator. Well, right. The fact that you were an educator good. and an well, author. you know what, Mark? I want to sign your copy. So we'll exchange. I need to just get your email address and, and go from there. I'll ship you yours because I want to sign a personal message in there and make sure you get it in your hands with my signature. Okay, then that will all do. As a matter of fact, I, I, I'm going to email you because you know this this partner thing this this looking for other folks to join the team thing has yep. intrigued me <laughs> phone or either by uh, email or what have you is to, you never yeah, know yeah my That's, email address is fields talks at yahoo.com Field you should have talk. an email from me last night you should have an email from me yeah. a text message and a voice message yeah, I last sure night do. <laughs> I sure do. So I'm definitely gonna if that if that's the current phone number, then I'll I'll yeah. contact you there as well as the uh, Yahoo address. But one way or the other, I mean, because this is the one thing about the power of networking, and this is where social media and LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff has been so valuable. Because you never know the contact you meet, what it's that's going right. to turn into. So that's right. Uh, many consultants they're doing their own thing. They're not looking for to build team members or to take partners mm -hmm. on or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're one of the first people that I've kind of heard saying, "Well, I'm looking to expand." So yes. you never yes. know. You are in Milwaukee. I'm here in New York, New Jersey area. You just never know what we can put together there. That's but, right. That's uh, but right. certainly intrigued me whenever you said that. The book, no question. Like I said, I can't wait to get it in my hot little hands here because <laughs> I'm already seeing what I'm going to do with it. The wheels are already Excellent. turning of how I'm going to use it. And you never Excellent. know. There have been times uh, where 
I've done things with authors on the show that had uh, a book that was relevant to my where I just ordered copies for my staff or students. So this Excellent. may wind up being a book that I order 500 copies of in the next school year because I already shot my budget Beautiful. for this year. But the upcoming Beautiful. school year budget, I may wind up ordering X number of copies for every student to have a copy. You just never know where it goes because I've had the That's experience right. before. You'll, you'll definitely see a difference in your staff and your students. I can guarantee that. So that, that keep that on the forefront of your mind for next year. Yeah, I mean, uh, there is a doctor. You probably see him on LinkedIn, too. His name is Antonio Webb. Uh, he, he I'm did, sure I have. You, if not, uh, friend Very him or whatever, connect him or, or whatever we call him on LinkedIn. Each, each thing okay. has its own thing. But his name is Antonio Webb. And I wound up okay. having him on the show. I wound up ordering his book. He actually Skyped with my students. I oh, him, wonderful. I, I pulled the students into the auditorium, and he Skyped with us out of San Antonio. And they had an oh, opportunity to it. see Oh, we got it, yeah. Yeah, yeah see, so you just never know where these connections, where they that. take you. Yeah. Right. And exactly. So I tell you what, we're down to the last few minutes, and I always turn that over to the author or the guest to promote. And at this time, you can promote anything you want other than dollar amounts. But as far okay. as connections, how they can contact you, book signings, yes. how to get in touch with your LLC, how, every anything yes. other than dollar amounts, because that you can do okay. offline. But this is your okay. chance to promote and shout out. Well, I certainly would encourage anyone out there listening, if you are in need of a keynote speaker, whether it be for your school group, for students, for young adults, youth, adults, parents, staff members, leaders, aspiring leaders, please consider Denise Fields. My email address is fieldstalks at yahoo.com. That's F-I-E-L-D-S-T-A-L-K-S at yahoo.com. I can also be reached by phone at area code 314-922-9577. In addition to the motivational speaking, if you just have, a, again, professional development needs, everyone needs professional development. This is for schools. This is for faith-based organizations, corporations, you always have grooming, leadership. Leaders need to groom other leaders. I am available to travel. I look forward to hearing from you. If there are any new leaders out there who say, I need a leadership coach, we can do one-hour segments over the phone. If I'm in the area, I'd love to stop by and meet with you and set up devise a plan of action, and last but certainly not least, I, I encourage every listener to get your copy of A Principal's Expectations from A to Z. The, the student one is out now, but don't let for students deter you because every person is blessed and, and will benefit greatly from this book. You can order it from Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. I've already had a book signing in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm looking to have one in St. Louis, Missouri within the next 30 days, and who knows where else I'll be. But e you can email me or call me I'll, if you want a signed copy. I will personally sign your copy and ship it out to you the same day. I hope to hear from you. Well, I, I'm a very memorable person. Once Fields gets in front of your group, you'll never forget forget the message or the person. Thank you, Mark, so much. I've enjoyed this morning tremendously. Well, same here. And to your last statement about being memorable, I can attest to that just from talking to you for the last hour and a half. <laughs> Seriously. I, 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 it usually, I'm, my, there are, to, every now and again, and I always tell, kind of tell my guests, you know, we, we're going to go be on an hour, but if the conversation really gets engaging, and that's not to say the others are not, but there are some conversations mm -hmm. that are more engaging than others, and I have the yeah. flexibility and the luxury to carry over. Excellent. Because Excellent. Uh, during my three hours, actually, my first hour is usually guest interview, and the last two hours is gospel music. So, okay. But I have the flexibility. Some mornings, if my guests don't show or either uh, I don't have a guest, I'll just do all three hours of gospel music. And then there are other mornings yeah. where I may book three guests, and I'll do all three hours of author interviews. But then there are times like this morning where we were originally scheduled for an hour, but because the conversation was so engaging, we went on into an hour and a half. And right. that's why I know for a fact that I always know when the interview is good when I got to run over. <laughs> I'm just saying it's gone beyond good. Let's put it that way. Well, that's what I appreciate that, and I'm so glad to hear it. I just 
again, I, hence the work that I do. If I have an opportunity to share and share the work that I've done and, more importantly, the work that I'm passionate about, I can do it all day. Well, all we, day, so we any, any change time. lives. The, the person you said that gave you the quote about going to money and going for changing lives, we yes. impact life. I mean, truth be told, and I tell people this all the time, and they look at me like I have three heads, education <laughs> is not that far from ministry. That's right. It is. It, it, it is ministry. Exactly. Right. You are so right. You are it's, so it's right. It's not that far. We're in the ministry, like the pastors and everything. They're really looking at the, the spiritual end and the, you know, the well-being in terms of that realm. But the educators at the same time, coupled with that, is looking at what you need to survive here on earth. In other words, you know, the spiritual piece is what you're going to need to survive here on earth as well as eternally. But the educational piece is what you need to do to be able to better yourself while you're here on the planet. That's right. And That's, see, the, 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 sub, the subtitle for my book is 26 Directives for Success. Yes. In school and in life. Yes. And that's the truth. If, if you can really, really capture these and say, I'm going to live by these 26 principles, you, you've got it. You've got it covered. Every letter. Right. Believe, B is believe that you are capable of doing anything. If you can really do that, you'd be good in life and in, in school and in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I've enjoyed our conversation immensely. I always put the caveat out that I set all the equipment up to record, and generally it works. Every now and again there's a fluke and it doesn't or it cuts out, this, that, and the other. But if everything did what it was supposed to do, I will be emailing you a link, a YouTube link, that you'll be able to use however you want. I mean, you hear the interview all oh, over again. Mark. You can email it out to people that didn't rise early with us. They can still get to hear it. <laughs> I share it on all my social media sites, so the message gets out in other ways as well. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, I would love that. I have so many people. I want to make sure that they hear what we've discussed this morning. And again, like you said at the beginning, hopefully it'll prompt everyone who's listening, um, to know that you can step out. When, when you're passionate about something, right. don't allow whatever you're in now to hinder you from right. really moving forward into the path that you really believe. So Absolutely. as soon as that link is ready, please shoot it out. I, I can't wait for everyone to hear both of us, our conversations from this morning. Correct. I'm going to try to get it to you before the night is out. If not, certainly okay. by the end of tomorrow night. At latest, Excellent. Monday. But usually I get it out to your authors the same day because I take it home and I edit it. I have like a little studio at home. Take the recording home, edit everything out that, you know, gaps or whatever, and then uh, put it into the YouTube format. And then I send it oh, out to okay. all my sites. I give it to you and you want to put it on web pages or send it to people. you free to do that. It's yours once I give Excellent. it to you. All right. Okay. So, all right. You Thank are on you so Central Time, so it's about 6.30 your time, and you've been up since 4. 6.30 my time <laughs> on a Saturday, so the bed looks great right now. I know that's right. <laughs> well, I tell you what, we will be in touch. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Mark. You all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Take care now. Okay. Well, needless to say, you, you can hear, I'm sure, that I've had a fabulous time talking to Denise, and I am going to get back in touch with her. You never know. But she just may have wound up getting her a team member or a partner in the business to represent here on the East Coast in the New York, New Jersey area, and I'm willing to travel as well. Just like she said she's willing to travel, I'm willing to travel as well, especially to go around speaking about the things that you just heard us talking about because education is my passion as well. Reading, speaking, writing, educating, learning. I just, I just logged on or just joined a streaming service and I won't tell the name of it only because of it is live and so forth and so on. But I joined a streaming service that actually allowed me now to listen to audio books that normally you'd have to buy. So now I pay a, a, a nominal subscription fee each month and when I say nominal like seven ninety nine, really low I mean like but it gave me access to so many different things and one of the things it gave me access to was audiobooks so now in the mornings whenever I'm in the shower or whenever I'm getting dressed or I'm eating breakfast I'm actually listening to audio an audiobook and usually it's something motivational so there is there is no excuse for not being able to always motivate yourself to always be learning something new to always be in the learning mode. There's no excuse for anybody to be dumb unless you just want to be dumb. 
truly, seriously, and I don't mean that in any crass or vulgar or offensive way, but at, in 2015, heading into 2016, there is no excuse for anybody to be dumb because there are so many ways you can be educated that don't cost. I know I mentioned that this one was a $7.99 a month subscription fee, but you can go to your library and go to Google for free. You can go to your library and download just about anything you want if they even charge you at all. So there really is no reason for anybody to be dumb in 2015 unless you just want to be dumb. Now that's a whole that that's about choice then. If you want to be dumb, you can be dumb. But that's a choice because you don't have to be with everything that we have available to us. So when you hear conversations like you just heard with Denise and myself and you can hear the energy and the passion coming through for what we do, we change lives. We touch lives. And like she said, every teacher needs to hold their head high. They need to hold their head high in terms of the profession. 